Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obweda. E tu man salam baraba sheka tababa me lusa kata li gadado saka me kura ba sheke toli baba God's report is my thinking li karaba sheka baba riko raba saka la ba brandis keto li kapara baba riko raba sheka tali bla kam baba everything you're looking for is in his report believe the report la kura baba sheka baba randros keto li kabarandis keto li kababa baba. Besotoba raba seka baba, masoka baba, lika raba baba, laka raba seka toli bradis ke toli baba baba, riko raba seka raba seka toli kaba baba. Isaiah forty five verse two. Okay, let's take it from verse one. Thus says the Lord, to His anointed the Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden. To subdue nations before him, I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will open before him. Are there gates that you are trusting God for? He said, "Whose right hand I have holden." To subdue nations before him. There are things God have to subdue before you. There are things that need to be subdued by Jehovah. You can subdue it. You can handle it. But he said he will subdue it. It may be a lingering issue that you're on a crossroad. You don't know where to turn. You don't know whether you're to go left or you're to go right. You don't know what direction to go. You don't know the, act, the direction to follow right now. He said, I will subdue it. Are you taking this to be your prophetic word this morning? Everything that is not of God before me is subdued. Anything that is not of God that is before me is subdued by the Spirit of the Lord. Whatever that is not of God that is before me is subdued by the spirit of the lord makile koraba sakababa likondre bosketo libra kande de bosakababa mekuga dazi katando yakaba mekongre de sekata likaraba sakababa lokia gangle de sekadingra baba sakalababa mekuga re bosketo libra karababa rikono bosakalababa rondro seketo libra karababa mekura mbre de sketo likapar Matuga diga so combra de sketo lika da baba, rika da baseke to libla kababa. Mekuga gredeske to lika da raba seka la baba, randreske to to mahalango haba saka, makure go do saka raba seke to lika baba, riko do bandre so kuma halanga, mengoma sanganga sandingla da da bazango, makuga zuko do bazaka riba baba, orande ko do bazandi akadaba, meloko ya do alaga gizodo ba, melekungre de sakama, aprondo soma alangri de sakaba ba. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Isaiah 45, verse 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. If there are places that are crooked right now that are not really producing, that looks like a hindrance, this is the prophetic word of the Lord. I will go before you. In this season, God is going before us. He said, I will go before thee. Maybe it's like you don't know what to do, but he said he will go before thee. If you take that as your rema world, you'll be out of the situation. He said, I will go before thee. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It doesn't matter what is 
you may feel or how it looks like right now he said I will go before thee what is the purpose why is he going before thee to make the crooked places straight I will break in pieces the gates of brass gates of brass represent hindrance and limitation he said he's going to break it in pieces he's going to break in pieces the gates of brass the gates of brass the gates of brass is going down next morning prophesy 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 Randres keto libra koro bo shakala baba. Randres angro do shakala baba. Le kuba setemba ya kuma alanda ya tombo sonda ya kadaba suka le brado sata pananda. Me kugadia satebra do shakala basi ko baba. Kurumbo sandra ba sanda la kadua saka. Rande bo sekata libra do sekata la baba. Randres seto angro do sukuraga. Ma kule kete mahalangra daba. Kodo mosanda ya katamba ya karando se kababa. Play this katababa. Every gates, every gates that is in opposition to visions of people listening, watching, or those that are present in this assembly hall, that these gates go down right now. Moskwa halangre de shakababa. Metoto satalabatea. Metoto kuba seto bo satabadi adaba. Beto ba ziko do zakuwa kadando ske debe sanga baba. Grede sakali karaba santa ba sakaba. Ledia sakata bandro sekaba baba. Tu be sende de kalakuwa rada sekaba. Rende sakanda ba. Me kuba kuwa de seka taba Rendo seka ba Riko doba seka doba Saka ribaba Rondo baba seka Rade seka mama Le do zi Godoma ale go Zakali adibo Rekoma le kari yako doba Saka riyako doba saka baba Nehemiah chapter 9 Prodo seki ya dadaba Suka raba seke da baba Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 21. Yea, 40 years did us thou sustain them in the wilderness. So they lacked nothing. Their clothes were he sustained them. There was no business they were doing. There was no place they were walking. He sustained them. When you have the knowledge of the covenant, you won't be afraid of your future. When you have the revelation of the covenant, you trust God with your destiny. The revelation of the covenant sustains your focus in the right direction. So I'd like us to just pray in the spirit. He sustained them. That simply means I can decide to do the will of God and then God will sustain me. I can decide to follow the will of God. <laughs> he didn't say that my money will supply all my need. He said my God will supply all my need. He didn't say my money will supply all my need. It's not the money. It is God who will supply all your need. So I'd like you to begin to pray in the spirit right now. He sustained them for 40 years. He sustained years. Our God is the God who sustains. Our God is the God who sustained. He sustained them for 40 years and they lack nothing. He sustained them. You know, sometimes you're looking at life and you say, how do I handle this? What do I do about this? Uh, Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 21. He said he sustained them for 40 years. They lack nothing. The covenant was in operation. The covenant has provision. The covenant has protection. The covenant has a, a divine strength, you know. 
that can cause things to go right because I have a revelation of the covenant nothing will be impossible to me I like you to lift up your vababa. being sustained being sustained it's not of him that will it of him that run it he said it is God who showeth mercy I am sustained not because of my gifting but because of mercy rendes katalika parambo shakaba baba Rekoba zuka raba seketoli kaba baba. Rekoba lengre sekata baba. Rendre seketoli bra kala baba. Rekodo basa kata libra kolo basa kaba baba. Makuge geleba sakuran seketoli kaba baba. Sustained by the Spirit of God. Sustained by the Holy Ghost. Rekaraba sekaba baba. When you're sustained, you know what to do. You know where to go. You know how to connect. Lika. I am sustained. Rico number some about 40 years he sustained them. He said they lacked and once every need was taken care of. When you lack nothing, it means including your needs and your wants are being covered by Jehovah. Rako Halaga. Rekoma Leden Salababa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, El Shaddai. I am sustained by the Spirit of God. A ministry is sustained by the hand of God. A church is sustained by the hand of God. A partners around the world, they are sustained by the hand of God. Our dreams are sustained by the hand of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You can take your seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I have a prophetic word from God. And this prophetic word will drive us, will move us into greater things. And I'd like you to Listen with expectation. You see, for God to do anything, he needs your attention to do it. For God to do anything, he needs your attention to do it. For God to do anything, he needs your faith to be available. For God to do anything, he needs your obedience. There are things God cannot do. Not because he cannot do it, but because what it takes to do it it's not available in the life of the person he wants to do it. What do I mean by that? Jesus. Jesus could not do mighty works. Because of what? The unbelief. Not because it was an unbelief. So the word is take over. That's the word. He said, it is time... To take over. It is time. You know, when God said it is time, it means you're required to do something. And what are you required to do? A, to believe. B, to expect. C, to declare. A, to believe. B, to expect. C, to declare. When the word of the Lord came to me and said, it is time to take over. There are many people, there's an area of their life where they want to take over, but they can't. They are trying to take over that area, but they cannot. Not because God doesn't want them to take over, but because they don't even have his word concerning it. Faith becomes active 
when you hear from God. I said faith becomes what? Active. One of the ways our faith becomes active to lay hold of anything is when God has given us a word for it. When God gives you a word for something, that word you have received becomes the source of faith, the source of inspiration, that word you have heard from God. Let me give you an illustration. In 2001, a church bought a property somewhere and we're building. We're not married then. So I told her when we finish the church building, we're going to get married. So we had crisis on that property because of lack of proper documentation that we never knew that this property was bought by an organization before our church bought it. So there was some issues and we lost that property. Then I said to her, we cannot marry now. We can't do a wedding because of we need to fix the building. Then one day they were married. Just a word. That word was the money. That word was the provision. I was looking at our challenge. Because of the challenge, I decided to say, we're putting off this area of our life and let us get stable. How many people are walking away from their vision because of challenges? How many people cannot step into their destiny because they focus on the giant? You see, that word from God became my resources. You see, now I'm going to take over that area because I received a word from God. When God gives you a word, stop waiting for the reputation of the word. You need more than confirmation to do the will of God. You need faith to do his will. A lot of people are waiting for confirmation. God gave them a word and they are looking for their word. I, I need to get a confirmation. I need to get a confirmation of this word. Where is confirmation? In Genesis chapter 12, when the word of the Lord came to Abraham, he wasn't looking for confirmation. That word was his resources for building his life. Everything in your life moves to the next level when you understand the voice of God concerning it. Nothing you'll be able to do, especially when it comes to great projects, when it comes to big things, you know, you, you can't do it except you have the faith to do it. And the faith to do it comes from hearing from God. There are a lot of people that God has spoken to them, but they can't step out. Factors, they look at and said, with this, with that, I can't do this. With this or with that, I can't do this. You know, unknowing to most people, they strangle their faith. You can strangle your faith. You can strangle your faith. And, and let me say this to us, we take over by the word. When God gives you a word, he has given you a platform for takeover. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. We take over when we receive a word from God. You know, a lot of people are looking for words that will make them excited. <laughs> you know, something that will make them feel like, you know, goose you know, start coming, you know. Ah, you know, let me say this to you. Sometimes God speaks and you don't feel anything. We walk by faith and not by sight. If I walk by sight, I could have shut down this church long ago. If I walk by sight, I won't have the, won't, won't have this ministry we have today. But you see, sight keeps you away from inheritance. Sight is the reason why you can't step into your destiny. Because you are considering 
what ought not to be considered when you expect it to step out by faith and do it. So a lot of people are walking by sight. They are looking at this. They are looking at that. They are looking at that. The only thing they have not looked at is the word of God. They have considered every other person's opinion. They have considered what this person will say, what that person will say, but they have not gotten into the world. I don't care what they say. My most, focus, my most important focus is what is God saying to me? If I can get the word of God concerning it, whether somebody support me or they don't support me, I will do it. Why? Because his word is the resources. With his word, there will be attraction of the right resources, of the right opportunity, the right people for me to be able to do what God wants me to do. So in Joshua chapter 6 verse 1, he said, Now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came. Look at the state of situation here. Jericho, nobody could assess Jericho. No one, but, but you see, God has a plan for Jericho. Understanding God's plan puts you in the right direction. And you understand his plan when you have the knowledge of his word. You understand God's plan when you have the knowledge of his word. You see, having the knowledge of his word secures you in his plan. And look at what he said in verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua. This is what it takes. The Lord said unto Joshua. The Lord said unto Joshua. A rhema, A word from God. That was why Jesus said. When, when Satan said to Jesus. If you know you are the son of God. Turn the stones into bread. And Jesus replied. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, it is by every word you break forth. It is by every word you make progress. It is by every word you have outstanding success, you have outstanding victory. It's by every word. It's by every word. Look at what happened there. He said to Joshua, look at this. And the word of the Lord came to Joshua. When the word of the Lord comes, you know what happened? Faith comes alive. When the word of the Lord comes, inspiration comes. Comes with the word. Ability to confront comes with it. This is why your spiritual life is like the conduit wire, the pipe. You know, how do I explain right now? Is the foundation for where you're going to. If you can't hear from God, what will you do? People are dying like chickens. A lot of people are losing their life, losing their relationship, losing themselves, losing so many things. You know why? Because if you're not hearing from him, you'll be taking step in the direction of limitation. If you're not hearing from God, You'll be taking steps in the direction of limitation if you're not here and fat. And the, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, the first key to taking over is to know what God has said and to understand what he's saying. That's the first key. Nobody takes over except he got a word from God and it's wrong. Otherwise, years will pass, months will pass, life will still be the way it is. Nothing has changed, nothing has moved because there is no understanding of his word. It is easy to understand, it is easy to win and succeed when you have a spiritual understanding. And spiritual understanding is strategic when it comes to taking over. And the Lord said unto Joshua, I mean Joshua can hear God. I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of follow, I have given, I have given, take. Is it possible that God has given, but a lot of people can't take? Is it possible that the phase of life could have ended right now, and a new phase of life start, but the person is still where they are? Why? Well, because... Their faith is not ready. There was something I noticed about God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. If he say you can, you cannot. 
If God wants to do something, he's watching your motive. It may be the will of God to give you this car or that car. But your thinking is not there. And because your thinking is not there, your faith is not there. As a man thinks in his heart, so you see. So if my thinking is not there, my faith is not there. And for you to receive anything is by faith. You know, somebody can be praying, say, oh, God, open the door. But if God opens the door, you need to walk in. Walking in is by faith. Huh? You walk in by faith. You know, a lot of people are looking at what they are going through instead of looking at God's word and said, God, I'm going to sit in your word. I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to live from your word. What really work is when you live from the word. Huh? What really works is when you live from the word and you say, well, I'm going to, I've tried everything. Huh? When I was an unbeliever, I knew how life was for me. When I ever knew God, there's all kinds of crazy life we live. All kinds of uh, stupid laugh, all kinds of crazy things we did. Nothing work. So when I came into the kingdom, I meant I want to also come to the extreme of it. I told you, I, I like being at the extreme of things. The reason for that is I, I want to know everything how it works. I don't just want to know some part of it. I want to know how everything works. So for that reason, I was going to give myself completely to it. So when I received Jesus, I decided to go for the word of God. Nothing was more interesting for me. I can trek a long distance to a church where I know they are preaching the word. I don't care the distance. I will go long distance. In short, there was a time, you know, many years ago, I was told of a particular preacher that was coming into this city. And this man, that was why I came. I wanted to come hear him. There was something about him I've heard because I've seen people that were influenced by his ministry. That there was something about him. What took me there was not the sugar night they were having. What took me there, I'm not looking for me to eat. If I want to buy meat, I can buy anything for myself. I wanted to hear the word because there is something about hearing the word that set the stage for what you're looking for. There's something about hearing the word that programs your faith in the right direction a lot of people are praying but their faith is not programmed in the right direction so it is by faith we are going to take over god said to joshua i have given you jericho that means joshua need to take jericho god has given a path to receive what god has given god can tell you i've given you the city i've given you this business i've given you that you need to take it and how do you take it you take it by the word if you don't place value on God's word, it will be difficult for you to rise beyond where you are. If you don't place value on God's word, if you see the word of God as something like, well, I just come in and I just take a note and I just walk away, and you don't pay attention to the word, you don't walk that word, my brother, you're just wasting your time. The year will come and roll by and nothing happen. Why? Because the things diligent, it required diligent to stay with the things of the spirit. It required diligent to do the application of the word of God. It required diligent to stay focused even when it looked like things are not working. It required diligent for things to flourish and prosper. It takes some diligence. So the things of the spirit doesn't just uh, come upon people or just begin to happen for people. There is some level of diligence required. And that diligence comes as a result of your faith in God. That diligence, I just gave you a simple illustration. That diligence comes as a result of your faith in God. So God said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho. That was the word. That was the word. If I was going to run, I would be running with this word. I have given you Jericho. I have given you Jericho. In Habakkuk chapter 2, the, 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 the word of the Lord came to the prophet. He said, write the vision. The vision is a prophetic revelation consigning what is about to happen. Come on. Uh -huh. I said the vision is a prophetic revelation consigning what is I was instructed to write the vision. As he that reads the vision will run with the vision. So when God gives you a word, that word becomes your resources for building. But the problem most of the time is that a lot of people think that I need something extra. Hmm. I, I, I need something extra. I, I need to feel it. I, I need to know that it is God. Let me say this to you. Train your spirit to be quick to respond to God. 
train your spirit to be quick to respond to God. You, you can be sleeping and you have a night dream and you have a night dream and, and the Holy Ghost begins to give you word of knowledge concerning that dream. He can give you word of knowledge. He can give you word of wisdom concerning the dream he just had. He can give you a word of knowledge. But you see, if you're not training yourself in the things of the Spirit, you'll be slowing yourself down. One of the ways people slow themselves down is as a result of their spiritual condition. The word of the Lord came to Joshua. He said, I have given you Jericho. So the first step to take over is to know that God has given you the place. It's to know that God has given it to you. It's to know that you have it right now. And the next step is understanding your covenant provision concerning it. Your covenant backing. You know that God has given you the place. And you also need to know that God is behind you in partnership. God is with you consigning, taking over. He has given you a word, but you see, sometimes God gives people a word, but in the natural, there are things that begin to context with that word they have received from God. There are things that begin to happen, and if you're, if you're not careful, you will step into doubt. Can this thing really happen? Look at what is going on right now. The Lord said was going to give us this building. The Lord said was going to give us that car. The Lord said was going to do this for us. The Lord said was going to do that for us. But look at the things that are happening right now. See, we are not to look at the wave and the wind. We are to focus on our journey. The focus is on the journey, not considering the wind and the storm. Because a lot of people go back in, you know, they walk into doubt because they start focusing on what is not important. They start focusing on what is not consistent with his will. So when I have a revelation of my covenant right, it is easy for me to take over. Covenant is an agreement. Covenant is a proof that are two parties in operation. Could remember one time I had a vision from the Lord. Uh, I had a vision from the Lord. And in that vision he said to me, he said, my covenant is with you. That was what he said to me. And I woke up. He said, my covenant is with you. Uh, and when God tells you his covenant is with you, uh, then I call a friend of mine and said, can you explain what it means when he said my covenant is with you? Then he started explaining to me people that had covenant with God. That God had covenant with them. God stood with them. You see, covenant is God at work in a person. It's God in partnership. When he said my covenant is with you, it means I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to be there for you. So when he told me that, I think I read that in the Bible, he told me that my covenant is with you. And, and when God tells his covenant is with you, he has given you a foundation for advancing. He has given you a foundation to do the impossible. Why? Because at this point right now, you are not going by your strength. You are going with the understanding of the covenant being in your favor. That's what makes a difference. You got a word from God. The next thing you need to know. That the covenant is in your favor. And because the covenant is in my favor. I will not be subdued. Hmm. That's what happened. It doesn't matter people that gang up against you. They are not wasting their time. Where you're going to, you know that you cannot fail. You know, see, you, you see, you can get to a point in this life where you know you can never go down. Why? Because you have locked yourself into God. <laughs> you have locked yourself into His principles. You have locked yourself into His will. At this one, if somebody's by the side praying witchcraft prayer, ah, they will not prosper. Ah, they will not. Those are waste of time. Those are waste of energy because this man is in the covenant. This man is walking in the revelation of the covenant. Because the covenant is in operation, this man destiny is already on, in, on motion. It's, it's a moving destiny. It's not a stagnant it's a destiny. It's a moving destiny because it has a revelation of the covenant. And this was why David became a very strategic personality. He has a revelation of the covenant. So when he looked at Goliath, he said, who is this uncircumcised resistance? What was he trying to do? He's trying to bring the knowledge of the covenant into the deal. 
He's trying to bring the revelation of the covenant into the battle. Look at this guy. He's, he doesn't have covenants. Who are you to defile the armies of the living God? The God of Israel. He's not in Moroma Shakababa invoking the covenant. Allow me to use that word. Ha! He was calling the covenant. He said there is a God of Israel. And the God of Israel is known for being a covenant keeping God. Haven't you heard that song? Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Almighty Father. There is no one like you. Covenant keeping God. He's known as what? As a covenant keeping God. That means what he said, he will stand by it. <laughs> what he said, whether there are one million people contesting or competing with you, they are wasting their time. Because when the covenant is in operation, you are exonerated to take the lead. That's what that's what the covenant it, it picks them out. So even if you're black blackmailing them or backbiting them, you just say Pew! like that. Pew! Yeah, because when the covenant is in operation, hidden things are coming alive. Those things that are hidden begin to come to manifestation. Because of the knowledge of the covenant, there is a possibility. Why do you need the knowledge of the covenant to make your faith work? For your faith to work. You need to know that God is a covenant keeping God. That what he said, he will stand by it. Mm. Eh? You cannot really take over anything God has not given you a word for. <laughs> you can be driving and pass, you can be driving and you saw a five star hotel. And maybe the Lord just drop a word, I will give you that five star hotel. If you have heard it, forget the five star hotel. The five star hotel is taken. You know why? That word that God gave to you, I will give you that hotel or that business or that ministry or whatever. That word becomes the foundation of the covenant. The covenant is made up of words. Mm. <laughs> I said the covenant is made up of words. There are words that make up the covenant. There is a covenant because there were words spoken. There are promises made. And that is what makes up the covenant. It is a covenant because he has said something. And the, the keeping of it is an indication that his covenant is working. And that is what God likes to do. So for you to take over. You need a word from God. Number two, you need a covenant understanding. Because I have a covenant with the God of heaven. I cannot be subdued here. <laughs> I cannot what? I cannot be subdued here. A young preacher told this a testimony. He said he was using a place for a church service. Another ministry that was very popular, known everywhere, came trying to use that same place of thing. And they offered the people more money. But he didn't have more money. They were almost taking his things out of that building. The covenant keeping God. Because he's a righteous God. Went to the owner of the property. So you can't do that. Peace. They call back those people and say take your money and go. When it comes to covenants, it's not about what you, money. Money is heavier than covenants. I prefer to take covenant than the money. Covenant, I have everything. Because with covenant, I have provision. With covenant, I have favor. So the covenant keeping God can go to people in their dream and say, don't touch his wife. That what happened for Abraham. He went to the man and said, hey, Abraham is a prophet. Don't touch his wife. Because he was a covenant keeping God, he ensured that the things that he said will come to pass. The reason why you're going to have protection is because you have the revelation of the covenant. So you take over when you know that God is with you. 
knowing that God is with you is an understanding of the covenant. I will be with you to the end of the world. So it doesn't matter who tries to come against you or who tries to fight you. Because he said he will be with you. All the things trying to rise up against you, they're wasting their time. You will get there. If somebody goes to some, maybe somebody's helping you right now, supporting you right now, and somebody goes to him and try to blackmail you and try to make you not to support them anymore, that doesn't mean that person will not get support. If he has the knowledge of the covenant, his provision will increase. I'm telling you, that's what happened. When you, God can raise one person to do a job as 100 people. You see, when you walk with God, you see, God is not a man. There, there, you see, when you have an understanding that he's backing you, it will be difficult for you to go down by any situation. The knowledge of the covenant is what sets your faith on motion. You need to know. He said, I will be with you till the end of the world. That knowledge is important because you can't take over without knowing that the covenant keeping God is with you. So, the next thing is faith to take over. Hallelujah. <laughs> the faith to take over. Now you have gotten the word. Now you have a knowledge of the covenant. The faith. There are particular people I like to listen to. The primary reason is that they stir up my faith. I'm telling you. Almost every week I'm downloading their videos into my systems. Because there is something about them. They are stirring up faith. There are messages that don't stir up faith. There are dead churches. See, there are things you'll be hearing, you won't do anything in life. Just take it from me. See, the kind of faith you're going to have is based on what my phone, they were having service and I was watching. Pearson was preaching. He preached to a point that Brother Copeland left his seat and came to the platform. He gave way for him and he started prophesying. I knew it was my time. My time has come. That prophetic word was for me. I brought out my note quickly. I was taking that word. That word was over. And they said that, they, they, that there, there are projects they have in their ministry. They were building a Bible school. That they wanted people to partner with them. I called one of my, our ministry office in Canada. I said, please, could you make some transfer to them? And see how you can make sure it happened right now. In me, there was something I wanted to do. But for the past few days, it's like there was something like a limitation. But when that seed went to the ground, something happened to my friend. That is the time. What happened? From Sunday, I listened to him. By Monday, something was staring up. There is a staring up in the spirit. I see, you move forward with words. See, and if you're hearing dead things, forget it. Forget it. A woman used to fly. I was talking to someone one day. A woman used to fly from, uh, from New York to LA every weekend for church service. And they asked her, are there no churches here in the New York? She said, no, no, there are churches. But she gets the word in New York, in, in LA. That's where she get the word. So we can she has him back to the place. What was she doing? Your faith to do things. Where will it come from? It comes, it's a faith come back. Not everything you hear. You can't see you can't waste your life on things that have no life. You can't play religion with your life because age is not on your side, time is going. So you need to hear things that will stay up your faith to move into what God. You, you can't compromise it. There are things you don't compromise. There are things you should not compromise. There are things. There are people that my pastor told me before he went home to be with the Lord. Said, Did, go and listen to these people. He mentioned their names. He told me what to do with them. He said, go listen to them. They're going to help you. There was something about the ministries of those men. Why? What they say comes with faith. The faith to do. There are a lot of people today. There is something they want to do, but they don't have the faith to do it because you, by strength shall no man prevail. 
It's not of him that will it, of him that run it. He says, God, who showed mercy? And that mercy comes into operation when my faith is alive towards God. When my faith is alive towards God. When your faith is alive towards God. Somebody may look at you and say, how many are they? It's not how many are they. The kind of faith the guy walks with. God is telling you what he wants to do. He's not looking at number. <laughs> There are people that their faith is on number. But there are people that their faith is in God. He said, have faith in God. There are pastors that their faith is in their number. It will have more people who can have more money to do what God has called us to do. But that is it's not more people the scripture talk about. What the, it's good to have more people. We're going to have more people. And we'll keep having more people. But the truth is that your faith needs to be in God and not in people. Because if your faith is in people, you are limiting your provision. You limit your provision by putting your faith in people. You, you increase and, and increase your supply when your faith is in God. And your faith in God, not your faith in your job. It's good to do your job. It's good to do your business. It's good to get a job. But not faith in job. It is faith in God. Because it is faith in God that activate the covenant and causes things to work for you. What are you hearing? What are you hearing? Men, take time and develop your faith. If you're going to take over, huh? take time to listen to life, things that bring life. As we have a Christian channel, when I come, maybe I look at it. I say, remove that thing. Maybe the person that is teaching, I'm not getting the word of God. Oh, you think I'll just come and give my 25 minutes, 30 minutes? No, my friend, you can't be kidding. Come and sit down and be listening to you, and I'm not having word. No, no, I don't have. I don't have that patience to say, ah, let's wait. Is the word is going to come? My brother, I don't have that patience. See, as you start, let it start coming. <laughs> ah, I don't have that patience to say, eh, just wait. And if you wait, sorry for English, I beg you. you know, I cannot wait. So I just need to hear it. And change it, go to somewhere else. You know why? You become what you give attention to. I'm not going to take my life for granted. I have. And the only way I can live it well is to pay attention to life. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. So if you're hearing something and it's not bringing faith, that's not the word of God. The faith to take over. Let's take, for instance, you want to start a business. Or let's say you're doing business already you want that business to go to the next level do you know you have to feed your faith until you start seeing possibilities you have to feed real feeding see you have to feed your faith until you start seeing it <laughs> there is even between talk The declaration of the word of God. They are not the same. There are people you see them right now. They don't have much money with them. But the kind of confidence they have in God. You know that they will succeed. Nothing will stop them. Because they have confidence in. You see that confidence in God is coming from understanding. It's coming from his word. That confidence in God. They may not have cash. But there are people also who don't have cash but no confidence in God. They are going to be broke all through. Life is going to be a struggle. Life was not meant to be a struggle. Whether you're a preacher or you're a church member or a believer in the body of Christ, it takes the knowledge of the word of God and the knowledge of his word is what supplies faith. The knowledge of his word. I had one experience. Let's say 
many years ago, wanted to do this old roof we have here. And our brother was helping us to manage a contract, the job. And one of the days we came and he told me that most of people are not responding in their giving. So we are a little bit having some challenges. And we'll have a meeting that was coming up. Just few days for the meeting to come. Man. <laughs> we have extended invitations to people. And what do we do? There was no physical cash. After the service, I went home. I went and brought out a DVD by Brother Copeland on finances and I slot it in. I just lie down on my bed. He was teaching. Then I fell asleep. Then I had a dream. A man looked at me and said, Call the money! Well, I said, okay. Money! Call it! Call the money. I began to call the money. While I was doing that, he gave me strategy. He said, when you go to the site today, all the old roofing sheets, all the material things you have, you can't use, you need to take them out, call somebody, trading some things you have, Believe me for favor, man. I just came to do what I had. And everything was in place. What happened? Faith came when I started hearing. Is, is it why some people are ahead of others? Is it why some people can easily, uh, the same challenge you have, is the same challenge they have, but they, they find their way out of it? Why? There was something they were hearing. See, when you're going through a challenging moment, don't pay attention to dead messages. You need more than die. Die. You need more than those crap. You need to leave. Hallelujah. Am I making sense this morning? You need more than the death of your enemy. If your enemy die, how have you prospered? If all the witches in your village die, do you think it will guarantee your prosperity? <laughs> huh? Huh? He said, I will subdue nations before you. And for God to subdue, you, you need understanding. Man, I locked myself into it and I was listening. Come on, you don't know where to get the money. And you're not willing to loan it. You're not willing to borrow. Because if you borrow, you will still pay back. So how do you pay back? You know, some people borrow, they don't think about paying back. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe if you go and take it from money lenders and, and the money begins to accrue, what, what happened? Trouble have started for the person. Is it not true? So, so my faith should be able to lay hold. My lay hold. There are messages. There are messages that brings faith to live. What are you listening to? There are things you tolerate that have a potential to limit you. As you keep tolerating them, you won't be able to grow. There are things you tolerate, <laughs> but they have a potential to limit you. So I need to hear about the ability of God. Hmm. Hmm. I need to hear. There are things you begin to hear and faith is being stirred up. Your confection change. Your attitude change. Your mindset change because of what you're hearing. There are people they don't see possibility. There is nothing they can see because what they're hearing is not creating the picture. They're hearing the things you are hearing, they are, they are listening more to what the enemy will do, what the enemy can do. Yeah, they are not listening to God. They are not listening to God's word. When somebody is sick, you know the best thing you do for him? Not to say I'm sorry. Keep an atmosphere of the word. Good word. I said what? Good word. 
Let me show you a scripture. Proverbs chapter 4. Let me show you something. That happen when it begins to enter into you. What is going to happen? You're going to take over without struggle. In, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, look at this. My son. You call him who? My son. It, it, when, you say, it, when you say somebody is your son, that means the person is there to you. Is it true? Uh, it's there to you. The person is important to you. He said, my son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. Incline the ear unto my saying. For they are life unto those that find them. Proverbs chapter 4, from verse 20 to 21. He said, he said look at it. He said, he said, look at verse 21. He said, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Health facts to their spirit. Health to their soul. Health. Health. Oh my God. You hear it. Man, I can do that word in this year. That is possible. We can. I can go for that mission trip. Who we'll have the finances? Because you're hearing. How do you explain? Somebody packed his bag. God spoke to him. He said, go to a particular country. And he does not have the visa for that country. He said, God, how am I going to go to that country when I don't have the visa? He said, pack your bags. We're talking about hearing from God. The faith that takes, that take off. You know, like a plane will take off. The faith that take off, that take off as a result of hearing the voice of God. He packed his bags. He got to the airport. He met the airport attendant. Said he wants to travel. He wants to join the plane. They said, where is your visa? I said, I don't have visa. God told me to travel. Please, Garrett. Next. <laughs> your faith can take off and sow up without a rhema. Without a rhema. A rhema is a specific word from God concerning a particular situation or need. So he went and relaxed. And the plane was done with burden. He told the people again that God told him to travel. He said, you cannot travel because you don't have a visa. The, the plane was set to go, but the plane can't take off. They tried. The plane, he said, The only way the plane can take off is when it enters. They tried everything. Everything in the plane is perfect, but the plane can't move. And they look at him and say, okay, we have heard what you said, but make sure as you enter that plane that it moves. He said, you don't have a problem. Carry his bag. They opened the plane, entered. As the pilot touched it, zoop, he left. What do you call that? It is so easy to change your life, people of God. It is so, if you can just take these things I'm sharing with you. These four months, God called it 120 days to take over. September, October, November, December. These 120 days. And no extra one day is added to it. Or two. It's actually going to be strategic days for us. Amen. Telling you. The impossible is about to turn around. The thing considered like a mountain that cannot be moved is about to experience a shift. 
In, you know, one of the shifts that God wants to give you is a spiritual shift. Then a mental shift. And all of this shift, shift begin with his word. God making his way into your spirit. Hallelujah. You can hear that you're pregnant with the word. That's my brother. I will deliver. Huh? You heard the word and heard the word and heard the word until you became pregnant of the word. Inside of you, you have, he said, out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living out of your belly. So, but, but, but let me say this to you. Listening to God's word is more valued than having physical food. A lot of people have good body lotion, good soap to take bath, which is very good. Good perfume to ensure that they take care of their body system that they don't have smell or whatever. They, they ensure they take care of their body properly. They, they have good creams, they have good things they use. But how many people take care of their spirits? Your body is here because the spirit have not left it. You have this body right now because the spirit man is house is the house of the spirit man. The absence of the spirit man is what is called what? death. That the spirit man have departed. Hallelujah. So hearing must be given attention. And hearing God's word. Now, your faith begins to take over when your faith is in the direction of his will. Don't forget that. Your faith begins to take over when your faith is in the direction of his Take over. Thank you, Lord. We can do that thing. We can fix it. We can handle it. Your faith begins to take over. You see, this is why John 15 verse 3 said, Ye are cleansed by the word. Huh? You know what the word will be clean? Will be clean inside of you? Doubt, fear, unbelief, worry, anxiety, depression, frustration. As you're hearing the word, the word is cleaning those things. Huh? As you're hearing the word, Doubt, you are, you are so worried about the whole situation. You are so worried, you're depressed, you're frustrated. No, no, frustration doesn't solve your problem. Depression does not solve your problem. What solves the problem is the entrance of the way into your spirit. The boldness to break limitation. There are things we cannot do. I said, we're in the word. And I see a lot of churches. Thank you. Sit down. I see a lot of churches focusing on entertainment. There are churches with good music, but the people don't have a good life. Singing alone cannot sustain your spirit. You need the word of God to wash your system. You need the word of God to wash. Say, ye are cleansed by the word. I need to pay some attention. Some details. Are you ready to take over? Those words. The next key before I round up, I have a few more things to say. This meeting is to run for two hours. That was what I told you. So when it's eight, that'll be done. Amen. So don't worry. I wish I could be teaching for five minutes. Is it going to be even more better for me now? You just go and sleep. Amen. Amen. I'm helping you. Praise the Lord. Sleep was coming to my eyes. I need 
to go to church. So when you see me come, thank God I came. If I've heard this thing many years ago, there are things I didn't hear. Because one of my friends told me something, he said he went to the wrong church. So apostle, what one of the things that affected my life is that I went to the wrong church. There are churches that bring setback in people's life. What? You know, if you grow, there are many people that could have done very well if 20 years ago they received the word of faith, they received the word of God. They would have gone very far. They just went to church for show. The man shouted, No word! How will you solve your problem when you don't know how to solve it? How will you bind the devil when you don't have knowledge of your authority? How will you walk by faith without the word of God? You can't do anything. My friend, you cannot do anything. Without God's word, you can't do anything. <sighs> Hallelujah. The next key in taking over is the key of vision. You need to see that it is possible. You need to see it. Nobody have to see it for you. You have to see it. Vision. Vision. Oh, vision in. Vision helps to sustain passion for continuity. Do you see it? God said unto Abraham, as your eyes can see. As your eyes. So, whatever he did not see, he can take. You can only take what you see. You come from a family where everybody struggles with life. Everyone is struggling with life. Nothing seems to work for people. Is it what you saw? What can you see? I want to see God. I want to see his word. I want to see his will, my friend. I want to see God. I want to see. What do you see? I want to show you a scripture. I was sharing it with my wife yesterday. The scripture so blessed me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is anybody here today? The prayer will find it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is anybody ready for this word? Thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready. Say to your neighbor, I'm ready. Hallelujah. Hmm. <laughs> Second Timothy 1 verse 6. Second Timothy 1 verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gifts, the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Stir up. What are we to do? To stir up the gift of God that is in thee. 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, that's what we read. Stay up the gift of God that is in thee. Why are we going to stay it up? Because if we don't, we won't be able to make progress. And look at verse 14. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in you. Keep by the Holy Ghost. As you pray in the Spirit, you will generate energy for the vision. As you pray in the spirit. As you pray in the spirit. This year cannot end but I may testify. You're telling yourself that. This year cannot end but I may have answers. You're telling yourself that. The, the remaining four months to end this year visible results eh? visible results this, 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 in short, we're, we're talking about the next four months oh, September, October, November December, take 
over. Which area of your life do you want to take over? Are there things you're seeing that stand like a limitation? Then you want it to break. You want it away. There are we are going to look at this month. They are very strategic. They are very important because you will need them in your journey. That's Second Timothy one verse thirteen. It said, Second Timothy one verse thirteen. Hold fast to form of sound words. <laughs> Sand word, my brother. That is what you need to hold. <laughs> Sand word, huh? Sand words, huh? Sand words. Say, hold forth, hold it, which thou have heard of me in faith and in love, which is in Christ Jesus. That word produce faith, and that word produce love in them. It's called sand words. Words that sound full of life. He said, Hold it. Wow. Vision. Visions are words spoken to paint pictures. I want to say that again. I said, Visions are words spoken to paint picture on our mind. Or to paint a picture in your spirit. When God said to Habakkuk, he said, write the vision. It was words, pictures, images. Words were turning to images. Hallelujah. Words. Words spoken. What can you see? These four months to live this year. What can you see? I want you to conclude. Let me say this to you. Follow me in this journey for these 120 days. I didn't say you'd be coming to church every day. That's not what I said. Amen. Let us not start on nothing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For these 120 days to end this year, or 122 days to end this year, Oh, please help me open this bag. You see one diary, it's brown. I want to read something, it's brown. The diary is brown. Okay, thank you very much. There are things that uh, the Lord dropped in my spirit. If you have a note, something to write with. In these 120 days, Expect the manifestation of his goodness. Expect the this one hundred and twenty days. Expect. Man, this thing has worked out for me. You heard what I said? This thing I've worked out for me. Lord, I thank you. Expect the manifestation of his goodness. Expect. Expect things to move forward. Expect to go forward. Have an expectation. Expect things to turn out right. For that to happen, there has to be a mental shift. Because there are some of some people that have believed that, man, I've been going through this thing for five years. I've been going through this thing for ten years. Life has been like this. We need to change how we see things. We need to start seeing things working for us. Not seeing things working against us. Don't see the limitations. See the possibilities. Don't see the limitation. The things that are before you. Oh, uh, half of your half of concerning your school. What what are you to do concerning? Ah, I don't have anybody to sponsor me. No, it's not sponsor. You need you need word first. I don't have anybody to help me. If you have enough word of God in you, you get help. I'm telling you. You know, people always say I don't have. That was what the man said in John Gospel chapter five. I have no man to put me into the pool whenever he stared up. But Jesus showed up and said. 
He said, he said, take your bed and walk. What he needed was word, not man. The next thing. Step out by faith. Step out. Step out by faith. There is no fear in faith. Step out by faith. Step out. Step out by faith. Whatever you want to receive, you want to trust God for. I said, step out by faith. Oh, pastor, I don't have the money. Oh, pastor, we don't have the money. Oh, pastor, we don't have the money. No. Is it money we're talking about? Or we're talking about step out by faith? Oh, pastor, we don't have the money. Oh, pastor, we don't have the money. No, that's what people can easily tell you. There was something we're supposed to do. I don't have the money. The more they say they don't have the money, the more they have faith and not having the money. Wow. Ooh, I just said some. I just solved somebody's problem right now. I just solved your problem. We don't have the money. I don't have the money. They have said it five times. You collect those things that be not as though they were. I don't have the money. We don't have the money. What are you saying? Talk to me now. Why are you behaving this way, my friends? Eh? I don't have the money. We don't have the money. We don't have the money. So what are we going to have? <laughs> we don't have the money. We don't have the money. There is no money. There is no money. You have said it 10 times. There is no money. And then you're not going to say, God, please supply. 10 times you said there is no money. Then one time you said, God, supply. Which one do you think will work more? <laughs> we don't have the money. That word needs to get out of your tongue. Need to get out of your life. If you don't know what to say, say, let's believe God for it. Did you hear what I said? Huh? Your children come and ask you for something. Don't say, I don't have the money. No. Find a way to remove it. It's a stronghold. <laughs> I'll give you an assignment too. <laughs> Find a way to remove that thing. <laughs> you have programmed that thing for over 20 years. <laughs> we don't have the <laughs> Do you see where the problems are coming from? Find a way to remove it. And we are removing it in this service. And I pray that God will help us to remove that thing from your system. We don't have the money. <laughs> There's another one. Where will we get the money? Where are we going to get that kind of money? That's another stronghold. <laughs> Where are we going to get the money? It is, it since you don't know, the money will not come. I don't know. <laughs> going to get the money. Where are we going to get that kind of money? What, what, where are we going to get that kind of money? Where are we going to get that kind of money? You don't know. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He didn't say where we're going to get it. Or knowing to most of us that it's a stronghold functioning inside of us. So it is difficult for God to move because the things in us can't let the flow. So you have to remove those things. Eh? Where are we going to get the money? We don't have the money. Hmm? The next one is, who is going to help us? These are things going on in people that is stopping manifestation. I wish I had more time this morning to just dissolve some sudden strongholds. This is how it always ends. This is how it always ends. I know it will end this way. <laughs> and it has been ending that way for them for more than 20 years. I know nobody likes me. You wonder why they are struggling from rejection. Nobody likes me. Nobody wants me. Most people who are depressed and struggling with rejection, their confession was also part of what set the stage for the situation. Nobody likes me. I know it's going to end this way. I know it's not, I know it's not going to work out. I know it's not going to. Well, I'm just trying to do it. Let's see, Shay, let's see what happens. Is there any faith in that word? Let, let's see whether it will work out. Unknown to them, they have started having what is called faith limitations. What is it called? 
Switch. Let me check. If I don't know what to say, keep quiet. I could say, let's believe God for it. Let's trust God for it. Work hard to get rid of ungodly conversation that I've stored in your memory that comes out like a vocabulary, personal vocabulary that you have as a person. Anytime something happens, you have your words, they just come and drop on the table like that. Those things need to leave. Those are the reasons why people cannot take over. Some of them before, Pastor, I have cried concerning it. I have cried. Tears will not solve the problem. We walk by faith and not by sight. The more you cry, what happens? Your faith suffers. Your faith struggles. The more you cry, tears won't solve the problem. Looking at it and you're getting worried, won't solve the problem. So, another key thing the Lord spoke to me, is, uh, the Lord told me is uh, expect things to work out. Expect things to work out. Expect them to work out. Eh? Let, let's have a new arrangement here, expect things to work out. It's things to begin to move out. That's you have left where you used to be. How I many of you are agreeing with me this morning? Huh? That I'm no more. I'm no more where I used to be. Something has happened to me because every change begins with a word, and the word has come to us right now. <laughs> We're listening to somebody yesterday. He said, "Be careful when a madman promises you a shirt." <laughs> a person said, "Be careful when a madman promises you a shirt." And went forward to say that the mirror is not responsible for the look of your face. Then ah. my wife was listening to my. <laughs> and when he said that, he said, Be careful when a madman promises you a shirt. What does that mean? He doesn't have a shirt on himself, he's not wearing any shirt. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus have mercy. <laughs> Be careful when a madman promises you a shirt. Very careful. So, there are things that we need to see turning out right well. That this September, these are the things I'm believing God for. They are going to happen. In the name of Jesus, they are happening. And you take a step and sow your seed. One of the things that the Lord told me said, continue sowing. Continue sowing. <clears throat> Continue sowing. There are ministries who must send offerings to this month. Continue sowing. You want people to help you. Who do you help? You want people to partner with you. Who do you partner with? What are you giving? How much of your money that? Let's, let's forget the tithe the tight issue. After your tithe, what do you give? Do you know that your offering was supposed to exceed your tithe? But you know what, what we'll do? Our tithe is the one we believe that is more than our offering. Your tithe is a fixed income. Your offering is not. It's in your offering we know whether you're a giver. Anybody can bring out 10%. 100,000, what is 10%? 10,000 naira. Put it in an envelope and you drop it. That's your tithe. And then you drop an offering of 50 naira. 100 naira. Now, now I'm, not, I'm not against anybody's offering. Whatever you want. That's in your offering, you express your giving. I was in a church where I was ministering. I was praying when I was going to that church. I said, God... I was praying. I said, God, please, whatever you want them, to, I don't just want to preach in that church. Tell me what you want them to know. Then the Lord spoke to me that the church and the pastor of that church need direction. I said, okay. Then he started telling me what to share with them. Part of the things he told me to share with them was in their giving. Have you set a goal for your giving? And one of the key words he told me was, if the people understand that they're dealing with me, they are not dealing with the church. They are not dealing with the pastor. They are dealing with me. It will change their attitude towards what they do. If I'm coming to church with a tithe and I think, okay, I'm giving it to the pastor. It's not to the pastor you're giving it to. You're tithing to the Lord. Jesus is the Lord of your tithe. I say, who is the Lord of your tithe? Jesus is the Lord of your tithe. So if you bring the tithe, the church now decide what they do with it. Hallelujah. A man came to his pastor and gave a million dollars and said, don't mention my name. Don't mention anything about me. Let's be like that. 
a million dollars. He said, don't mention money. I don't want to hear anything. I just want to give it as an offering to the Lord. So, your giving needs to step up. Your giving needs to step up. If, it were, if you're doing 20 naira before, just believe God to do 30 naira this month. You know what I said? Eh? If you're doing 200, believe God to do 250. Consciously begin to give. I've consciously started giving offerings in millions. That's how I'm going to be living. I will pledge it. I believe. Even if I don't have it, I will pledge it and believe God. I'll pay it. I want to put myself in that shoe. I want to put myself there to give like that. Because if I give like that, it will help my thinking. I may come to church and give any level of offering, but that's not my offering. I position myself. Because something happened here in December when we came for family Thanksgiving in December here. And I think our brother helped us, you know, about to help us got the cement, you know, I think 20 bags of cement. So we're all dancing, thanking God for her, as our family now. We've come to thank God. My wife said she was sitting there. She said, how can we give God 20 bags of cement? Throughout this whole year, God has helped us. It's 20 bags. Hi. He said, but last year itself was even better. We even gave something more better. Me, I didn't even think about what we gave last year. I was thinking about uh, the 20 bag that we have come with. You know, you have to reevaluate your giving. Church, are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Once you came with the Lord, you know, your, your work with God should be better. And while I was here praising God, he said, make a vow. A vow? I said, I'll give an offering of 2 million naira. An offering. I'll give an offering of 2 million naira. I believe God, and I was able to give the offering of 2 million naira. Then I notice that I can go to three. Then I notice I can move. Because things don't move until our thinking move. And one of the keys to taking over offering and thanksgiving. Well, we're almost done. Offering and what? And thanksgiving. Pay attention to your offering. Don't just drop anything on God. Nobody will tell you what to give you. But don't just drop anything on God and just, yeah, yeah, just drop it. No. Begin to pay attention to what you give. Begin to honor God in your giving. Begin to honor God. You know what that will do? It will open more doors. Begin to honor God in your giving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Begin to honor God in your giving. Begin to honor God in your giving. With thanksgiving. I had a preacher said something. He said, for many years he has believed God to give an offering of a million naira, a million dollars. For many years. You believe God, you will pray about it. He said, Lord, help me to give an offering like this. The way we set goals to build house, to buy a car, we should set goals to give good offerings. Hmm? We should set goals to tithe. We should set goals to sow. The, these keys I'm giving to you, they are the takeover keys. They are the takeover keys. Offering and thanksgiving. Went to church last month. Throughout last month, you're giving 100, 100 naira. They said, this month, I believe God for 150. I was in a school where I was teaching something like this. And a lady came to give testimony. He said, Pastor, the time you came and shared about that increasing the offerings, he said, I said to myself, I'm going to give an offering of 500 naira. That was what she told herself. And the first Sunday she gave the offering, the other Sunday she gave. So one of the Sundays we were coming, she didn't have the 500. She started believing God, Lord, my offering is 500 naira. I'm going to give 500 naira offering. She was believing God. You know what? Night, Saturday night, 500 naira came. See, when you move in your giving, you have also moved in your receiving. I like us to pray in the spirit. I wish I could teach more. I like us to pray in the spirit that uh, in your giving, your offerings and your thanksgiving, do you pay attention to what you give to God? Do you pay attention to what you give? If you watch sometimes when the children of Israel will take over a place, they build an altar. Part of what you see in, a, in, a, in an altar is an offering. Part of what you see in an altar is what? It's an offering. Part of what you see in an altar is what? It's an offering. It's an offering. Whenever an altar is built, it means a place of offering. A place where offering will be given. A place where worship will be given. 
Worship is part of offering. Why, are, why, why do they raise an altar? If you look at the Old Covenant, in the New Testament today, we have become the altar of good. Hallelujah. We have become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We may not be raising like uh, physical altars, you know, everywhere we go, we'll build an altar. No, that's what we our, te our testament is a different testament. But, but you see, what happened here was that when an altar is raised, it means a place of offering has been raised. An altar is a place where people meet with God. And Jesus to take over is to understand the altar life. A life of consecration. An altar life. And you begin to talk to God. Pay attention to what you give. There are some of you here, you used to give heavily. And many years you were doing that, but now you can't even do it. Now you can't do it. You need to go back to that kind of life. Because it causes things to go right. I like us to pray in the spirit. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. It's time to take over. Mankuga halandra seketeba. Lendro basakandra desketolika bababa. Lundumbo sendalaba sendre katalingra da basokoba. Bandro sokandora basakaba. Liga pasoko lo besekaraba. Le tuma alendo kubakuba le besekeba. Badrika tabanle le bosaka. To pay attention to what you give to him. Abel showed up and he took over from Kaba. Makuli Kalaba Seketoli Karaba Baba. Retoba sendro basaka la basaka ba kugro do sandre basata le baba rendo baba basaka raba seke le ba la dua seto para baseto le baba pepetete ne ma pepera da soto rapara de saka baba pay attention to what you give to God pay attention to what you offer before Him it is possible it is available <laughs> that's what the Spirit of God is saying it is possible. It is available. It is available. It is possible. It is available. Bruno Sakaraba Setoli Baba. It is possible. It is available. It's achievable. You, we can achieve it. We can receive it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, El Shaddai. In the name of Jesus. While we're still praying, if you're watching this broadcast or you're listening to this broadcast, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to understand that God loves you and he has a great plan for you. And if you want to receive him right now, I want to say this to you. you. You can't take over without Jesus being the Lord of your life. You can't take over without him taking over your own life. He has to take over your life before you can take over things you want to take over. So if you're watching me today or you're listening to us in any platform today and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, it means you're born again and you're not going to remain the same. Now, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faithman Teachings on YouTube. And also, you can watch me every day on finishworktv.com. Finishworktv is streamed 24-7 every day, helping people around the world to receive the engrafted word of God. And also, you can connect with us by getting our books on Amazon. There is Greatness in You is our recent book that made it to Amazon.com. So, you can go to Amazon and order for there is no friend or you want to sow a seed, you want to tie it, you can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving. You can use your cards there to do your giving. And I pray that the Lord will increase you and add more to you. You have been hearing these teachings and the Holy Ghost have been telling you, you need to partner, you need to sow into this ministry, you need to support the ongoing work of the kingdom. So as just listen to him and just follow his leading
and much to do. And Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. Let's rise and begin to tell him thank you. Lord, we thank you.